trusted and male. Please take this opportunity to silence your cell phones and anything else that might meet or buzz. Please take note of the nearest exit from the venue in case of need. Thank you for joining us on this important day. candidates and platform party take their seats. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the December 2018 graduating class of the Philip Merrill College of Journalism. Please be seated. Presiding over today's exercises, Philip Merrill College of Journalism Dean Lucy Dalglish. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to the graduates of the class of December 2018, honored guests, faculty and staff, parents and friends. Welcome to the Philip Merrill College of Journalism commencement ceremony. We are proud to honor the women and men who have completed the requirements for the degrees of Doctor of Journalism Studies, Master of Journalism, and Bachelor of Arts in Journalism. First, let me introduce you to the members of our platform party. Please stand as your name is called and remain standing until everyone has been introduced. First, we have today's commencement speaker, Senior Lecturer and Director of our Capital News Service Broadcast Bureau, Sue Copen Katzif, Associate Dean and Director of the Master's Programs, Rafael Lorente, Director of Internships and Career Development, Adrienne Flynn, today's student speaker, Jonathan Orbach, Assistant Dean of Undergraduate Studies, Josh Madden, Associate Professor Ira Chinoy. Merrill Lecture, Senior Lecturer, Director of Assessments and Director of the Graduate Multimedia Certificate Program, Christine Harvey. Professor Sarah Oates. Doctoral Candidate, Boya Shu. Associate Professor and Director of Merrill's Doctoral Program, Ron Yaros. In the back row, we have Professor and Richard Eaton Chair of Broadcast Journalism, Mark Feldstein. Merrill Lecturer Adam Martin, Capital News Service Bureau Chief and Lecturer Sean Mussenden, Associate Professor of Investigative Journalism Deborah Nelson, Roy Howard Distinguished Visiting Fellow Marty Kaiser, Merrill's Able Professor in Baltimore Journalism Sandra Beniski, Professor of the Practice and Director of the Shirley Povich Center for Sports Journalism, George Solomon. Bureau Chief for our Capital News Service Washington Bureau, Jim Carroll. And serving as our announcer, our Communications Manager, Alexander Piles. Please be seated. Now that the formalities are over, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us on this relatively cold December morning to celebrate 
the achievements of these Merrill College graduates. Thank you especially to those of you who traveled a great distance to be with us today. I always find commencement to be inspiring and uplifting. And you know, Merrill College is pretty small in comparison to some of the giant colleges on this campus. But one of the things a small De December commencement ceremony can do for you is to make this feel more like a family gathering. And we hope you leave here today feeling that you are part of the Merrill family, all of you. By the time these students leave us, we feel a lot like you parents did when they left you a few years ago as an empty nester, left you to be empty nesters. We are sad to see them go, but we are so pleased to witness their excitement to get on to the next stage of their lives as journalists. So the next order of business for us is to follow our custom to invite a leader in the field of journalism or journalism education to speak, offering our graduates sage advice. This year's speaker is Sue Copen katsif an award-winning journalist and Merrill College senior lecturer who serves as the Broadcast Bureau Director of Merrill College's Capital News Service. Both her students and their three times a week newscast have won numerous awards at the local, regional, and national level. She previously was a reporter and an anchor for WBAL Radio in Baltimore, a reporter at WJZ-TV and Maryland Public Television, and a reporter and anchor for WBCM Metro Media Radio. Sue is on the National Board of the Society of Professional Journalists, where she serves as the National Vice President of Campus Chapter Affairs, and is also our faculty advisor for the SPJ chapter. Through SPJ, I have known Sue for more than 30 years. What I have admired most about her is her work ethic, her ability to build a broadcast team for the Capital News Service every single semester, and her devotion to students long after they graduate, and not just Merrill's students. She cares about the students through SPJ that have graduated nationwide. When I want to track down a broadcast alum, I don't typically go to our database. I check out Sue's social media pages. Sue is retiring in June, although I don't really expect her to slow down. So please join me in welcoming beloved Merrill broadcast teacher, Sue Copen katsif So, when I got this email from the dean a couple of months ago, asking if I'd be willing to speak at our December commencement, I had to make certain I was reading that correctly. Yep, that was the request. I have been fortunate to coordinate more than a few conferences, participated on lots of panels, moderated many of them, but a commencement speaker? That's a whole other thing. But here I am. So if you're wondering how I got here, I am too. But I have a hunch I know how it may all have started. My love for and dedication to journalism had an early start. Seventh grade, in fact at Riverview Junior High School in the small town of Denton, located in Caroline County on Maryland's Eastern Shore. That's when I first joined the school's newspaper staff. I became editor-in-chief in ninth grade, editor-in-chief again in my junior and senior years of high school. And I got involved in radio with a public affairs program at, in Easton, uh, which was the next county over, my junior year of high school as well. My early involvement, immersion, if you will, in journalism became a passion. A passion encouraged and nurtured by a very special journalism advisor, Suzanne Gehring, with whom I had the good fortune of teaming up with from seventh grade all the way through my senior year of high school. She challenged me, and we tried new things. That included taking off our high school principal when I went straight to the superintendent of schools in order to gain our financial independence. I needed the superintendent's approval to change the county's policy prohibiting us from selling ads to support our school newspaper. It seemed to me all you had to do was call the superintendent's office, which I did. I met with him and policy changed. My principal, though, was none too happy. 
Nothing like getting summoned to the principal's office and getting a lecture about going through proper channels. Although he never once mentioned my having gone to the superintendent. Point made, goal achieved. So I learned early to be prepared to challenge convention and the rules and the value of skipping the middle person and going right to the top. My foundation in good journalism, fact-based reporting, making sure all voices are heard, was formed pretty early thanks to that outstanding advisor and some incredible opportunities. I hope that you, graduates, have also had the opportunity for an early mentor to help set your course, if not in middle or high school, hopefully, perhaps here, at the Merrill College. And as I look at you, I think back on my own time as an undergrad here at the College of Journalism now a few decades ago. Things have certainly changed. For one, we didn't have a December commencement. Two, the College of Journalism was located along the Keldon Mall in a building sorely in need of updating. Women enrolled in our journalism program back then were in the minority. And our choice of concentrations at the college at that point, we had three, print, broadcast, and public relations. Maybe, maybe someone used the phrase fake news, but that truly would have been news to us. I came to campus as a freshman probably about the time Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein were just starting to dig into the break-in at the Watergate. And you all know where their reporting led them and how it changed this country. Journalism, in all its evolving forms, can and does make a difference. And you all should know that it comes from both the big and small stories that we tell. You, graduates, have been challenged to think in different ways when it comes to informing and serving the public. And make no mistake, our role is critically important to an informed public and essential to our democracy. You know well how important that role is, both as a journalist and as a citizen. You know that facts matter. But on occasion, we do make mistakes. And it's even more important to acknowledge that and make the appropriate corrections. Not only is it the right thing to do, it's important to maintaining the public's trust. They need to know that we can admit to our mistakes and correct them. We are not the purveyors of fake news. We do take seriously the responsibility to get the story and get it right. Journalists have taken the heat pretty much since taking quill in hand. It comes with the job. Sometimes, though, we do a pretty poor job of explaining what we do and the important role that journalists and the First Amendment play in our democracy and ensuring the public's right to know. As you leave us, you leave with a clear understanding of that role. You've had it beaten into you, we know that. Use your knowledge and experiences to challenge those who would dismiss the job journalists do as fake news. Tell them about the difference journalism makes in local communities and on the national and international stages through those small and large stories. Tell them about the sacrifices journalists have to make in pay, in time, and sometimes with their lives in order to bring those stories to the public. And it doesn't matter what path you end up taking once you leave us, you get it. Share those insights and understanding with those who may not. I got a wonderful note, and this literally just happened two days ago, and I kept thinking I needed something a little bit more and this note came in from one of our alums whose career path has in fact gone in an entirely different direction. But the foundation she received here at Merrill has clearly helped with guiding her. I'm gonna share with you a portion of the note that she sent to me. She said, my education has opened many unexpected doors post-graduation, and I have been challenged to apply what I learned in entirely new ways. I've grown to appreciate my experiences in undergrad even more now that I'm no longer surrounded by individuals seeking truth and striving for honesty every day. Standing up for what is right, holding oneself accountable, acting independently, acknowledging mistakes, and working to minimize harm. These are the foundational principles I wish every individual upheld 
And even though I may not apply them today as a journalist, I hope to apply them every day going forward as a nurse. So, no matter where you go, what path you may take, always remember and spread the message. We are all in this together. Journalists are not the enemy. Remember, facts matter. And remember, you are Merrill Maid. Congratulations to our graduates, the families, and friends, and thank you. Professor Sarah Oates and Associate Professor Ron Yaros will now present the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Hoya Chu has successfully completed all requirements for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Journalism Studies. Hoya, would you please come forward to say a few words about your research at Merrill College? Um, thanks, Sarah. <laughs> well, it's uh, 24 years of schooling. That's a long time, but uh, I'll try to make it quick here. So, um, so for those of you who are wondering what I had to do to get to this stage, um, I wrote a dissertation on what makes, what motivates people to share news online, and um, and I found that it's a combination of two factors. Uh, the first factor being personalized content that motivates people to more likely to share news, and the second factor being uh, people's motivation to maintain their relationship and engagement with others, which is a very crucial one. Um, I've always been very fascinated with uh, human psychology, so this project really uh, speaks to my heart. So, um, and I wish I could say that I've made all that, uh, or made toward this way all by myself, but that's just not true. Um, and there's so many people that have walked alongside me in this journey and showed tremendous support through good and bad. And the past few years at Merrill have been a really amazing experience. And um, the win is kind of a lot of the personal and pro professional growth of myself. And, and I've also made lifetime connections with so many talented and amazing people here. So, um, and here I just want to um, thank my committee members, especially Dr. Sarah Oz and Dr. Ron Yaros, who are my co-advisors, um, Dr. Kalyani Chada, who's the most generous and caring person who nurtures so many souls here, um, and Dr. Nick Diakopoulos, who used to teach at UMD, but continued to serve on my committee even after his departure. Um, and also Dr. Sahar Kamis from the Department of Communication who graciously stepped in when we were in need of a new committee member. Um, I could not have made it this far without these people's help. So um, I just want to give a special shout out to my advisors, Dr. Sarah Oates and Dr. Ron Yaros. Um, Dr. Sarah Oates, I can't thank her enough for everything she's done for me to bring me to this stage of doctoral studies, not just with a dissertation, but also with the coursework, the comprehensive exams, the proposal, and everything. Um, and Sarah motivated me to become a better person and a uh, better researcher and writer. Um, and more importantly, she inspired me to become a stronger person. So um, we have a shared interest in nerdy but fun subjects, and also we love cats. Um, that's always part of our discussion. So i um, also super grateful for Dr. Ron Yaros, who basically started all of this. And I owe Dr. Yaros for uh, my passion for user and audience studies. And, um, and she made, he made wrestling with numbers and all the quantitative stuff really fun and uh, really exciting as well. And Ron inspires me with his dedication and passion uh, and his tech-savvy skills. And, uh, um, and also just the desire to learn and be better, and I feel like he's going to be an inspiration uh, for me forever. And so all of these committee members have all been a very strong force to lean on in various stages of this journey. So, um, and beyond my committee members, I'm also just uh, indebted to many other faculty and staff members of the Merrill uh, College here, as well as a, a lot of my personal friends and connections. Um, outside of the academic world, really. So uh, they've kept me 
sane and grounded and made this process lonely no more. So I'm truly grateful for that. So for those of you who are thinking about grad school or want to go further in grad school, I really suggest that no, whatever you do, make sure you don't go through the process alone. Um, so you have all the support from your family, great family uh, members, friends, connections. So. Um, so I'll wrap it up here, but last but not least, I want to give a shout out to my parents who cannot be here today. They're both academics, but um, my uh, family from Florida, and two of them who are here today, uh, made it all the way up here to, to, to see me graduate and share this moment with me. And I want to share everybody um, in that regard to uh, that they've really pushed me hard, but ultimately gave me the freedom to ch chase my dreams. So, um, and um, the Mirror family has really been my home away from home in the past 10 years, and um, I'm beyond grateful to have them in my life. So, thank you so much. <laughs> it is my privilege to present Boya Chu before Dean Delgleach and the college's faculty is eligible to be invested with the doctoral hood reflecting her earned degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Dean Delgleach, in accordance with the recommendation of her examining committee, the journalism graduate faculty, and the graduate council, I request that you recognize Ms. Chu for her accomplishments and welcome her to the honorable company of learned women and men. I am pleased to accept the faculty's recommendation and am honored to welcome Boya Chu to the ranks of the students of the Philip Merrill College of Journalism who have received the highest degree awarded by the university. Associate Dean Rafael Lorente and Senior Lecturer Adrian Flynn will now present the master's degree candidates. Each candidate will receive a lithograph and congratulations from Dean Dalglish. Will those candidates who are here to receive master's degrees from the Philip Merrill College of Journalism please step forward. Christopher Chiaffi. Aaron Rosa. Zachary Selby. In accordance with the recommendation of the faculty of the college, Please recognize these candidates who have successfully completed all requirements for the degree of Master of Journalism. Graduates, please be seated. Assistant Dean Josh Madden and Senior Lecturer Chris Harvey will now present the bachelor's degree candidates. Each will receive lithographs and congratulations from Dean Dablish. Will all undergraduate degree candidates please rise to receive a lithograph and our congratulations. In accordance with the recommendation of the faculty of the Philip Merrill College of Journalism, please recognize those candidates who are here to receive their degrees of Bachelor of Arts in Journalism. Kalina Maureen Dyer. Sorja Mukherjee. Warren Bird Duckett the Fourth.
Cody Solomon Branshaw. Christopher Daniel Tulp. Jennifer Schultz. Ashley Catherine O'Connor. Catherine Elizabeth Bem. Patrick Mullen Bassler. Helen Mamo. Jonathan Brett Orbach. Let's congratulate all of our graduates one more time. It is an ancient university tradition to give an outstanding graduate selected by our undergraduate students the opportunity to address the commencement assembly on behalf of fellow students. This year they have selected Jonathan Orbach to represent them. Please join me in welcoming to the podium Jonathan Orbach. I'd like to start by thanking everyone for being here. It's nice to see that my ploy of delaying my graduation to increase the odds of being voted speaker paid off. <laughs> I know no one likes long speeches, so I've kept mine to 35 minutes and I'm repeating it only twice. Special thank you to my parents, Dan and Susan, for their constant support and money. If you, if you told them that I'd receive a, a degree from a coveted journalism program 10 years ago, they'd probably wonder how I was able to do all of that at age 13. Back then, though, I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. Having been raised by South African Israeli immigrants, however, I grew up with an appreciation for and immersion in other cultures and a love for travel. Recognizing this, I figured that Merrill College would be the perfect fit for me from day one of my sophomore year. Journalism rewards curiosity like that. When traveling to different places, I noticed the training I've received here has pushed me to ask questions, take photos, and connect with others in their stories. Journalism pushes you to go to places and events to which you wouldn't otherwise go, and talk to people who don't look or think like you, and what an absolute pleasure that is. Earlier this month, for example, I had the privilege of visiting a local middle school that's reportedly riddled with gang violence. And while that certainly isn't false, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. Going to the school, talking to the students, interviewing the incredibly inspiring faculty, chatting with the police parked outside, and taking in everyday interactions, I understood how helpful it was to actually go and see the place for myself, and how much better I was then able to contextualize the goings on. Backed by the extensive and top quality journalism training I've received at UMD, I had the confidence I needed to ask the right questions and produce a well-rounded report. And while I've breathed College Park air for no fewer than eight semesters, I did spend one in London, a world famous city in the British Isles, and I want to share a brief anecdote from that semester. Uh, on one of my first nights there, I went to a pub and I ordered a drink. And when the bartender came back with the drink, he asked me cash or credit. And it was loud and I was kind of tipsy and I thought it was some weird British thing, so I just said, surprise me. Um, <laughs> this was obviously met with bewilderment, um, but the girl next to me clarified and she later became one of my best friends. The lesson? Situations that may initially be uncomfortable or daunting may lead to making friends with British people. <laughs> the college offers so many wonderful opportunities that bolster its status as one of the top journalism programs in College Park. With fantastic equipment, renowned faculty, 
loads of class subjects, and generally just excellent training in writing, video, photojournalism, and more. I'm lucky to have been afforded the opportunity to have attended the college for as long as I did. There are countless hackneyed cliches with which I could end this speech, but for the sake of time, I've picked just a couple. Indeed, in an increasingly digitized media landscape, we can consume and produce information more quickly and ingest it more efficiently than ever before. It can be quite easy to think we have a, a strong grasp of an issue, culture, or story, after a quick skim of an article. But meaningful storytelling requires deep dives. Giving an outlet to the, to the underserved is an incredible power journalism makes possible, but it requires physical presence with the subject. I strongly believe there's no substitute for first-hand experience and documentation, and producing content that stays as true to that subject matter as possible should be every journalist's goal. Be objective, analyze and present both sides of the argument, and be open to new experiences and ideas, be they matters of foreign relations or payment method at your local pub. I'd like to extend a special thank you to Dr. Kalyani Chada for four semesters of wonderful classes and guidance, and thank all of you so much for being the wonderful classmates, parents, grandparents, professors, mentors, faculty members, and speech watchers you are. Uh, lastly, a big shout out to Mike Zanetti. He did the camera work, so thanks, Mike. Uh, congratulations, class of 2018. That was wonderful, John. Thank you so much. Very good job. Thanks. Congratulations. You can take, don't forget that. Of While all of our students work hard to attain their degrees, there are a few who deserve special recognition because of their accomplishments. In your program, you will find the names of this year's award recipients, as recommended by members of our faculty. Associate Professor Ira Chinoy will now recognize our top multimedia news student for this commencement. Will Katie Bev please come forward? Join me right over here. So I first got to know Katie three years ago, it's hard to believe, um, in my course in journalism history for incoming journalism freshmen, and I was very happy to have her in that, in that course. I immediately recognized her intelligence, uh, her capacity for insight, and her wit, uh, which is, these are gifts to a faculty member if you have students uh, like that. And then, uh, a year ago, um, I got to have her back in the same classroom as my teaching assist assistant, uh, and I was glad to have her in that role, because in addition to the duties that she fulfilled in that, in that position, I knew that she'd be a great role model for the incoming freshman wet behind the ears, needing a little encouragement. Um, and that's because she made the most of her time here uh, at Merrill College. Um, uh, for starters, she rose to be an editor at two campus publications, The Diamondback and Stories Beneath the Shell. Um, and she also did uh, other sorts of things. She was uh, a communications intern for the American Red Cross. And for three years, she worked for College Park Scholars uh, doing communications and special projects management. And of course, there's more. Um, uh, in addition to journalism, she minored in public leadership and in international development and conflict management, that's a lot in one career. And beyond journalism, um, she's really driven to be involved in public service and she's developed her leadership skills in part through this very prestigious program here, the Rawlings Undergraduate Leadership Fellows Program. There are more awards, there are more services, uh, there's service activities, there's a lot more stuff. Uh, we don't have time for it all, but you, you, get, you get the idea. So I wanted to know what her other faculty members thought about her, right? So I, I'm a reporter, I reached out, got some answers, and um, what I heard didn't surprise me at all. So I'm gonna read you some of what they had to say. Don't get too embarrassed, it's, it's really good. Um, so Brooke Augsier, who had Katie in a capstone class uh, doing capital news service, um, described her this way. She said, Katie was truly a dream to have in the bureau. She's friendly, funny, kind, and an excellent teammate. She's incredibly hardworking. Uh, reliable and smart. She's one of the best students I've worked with in my time at Merrill. Uh, Professor Kevin Close had Katie in a leadership class 
and he described her as having, uh, quotes, an unusual combination of quietness, candor, knowledge, determination, grit, and what he called centeredness. I like that. I'm going to try to use that in a sentence later today. Centeredness, that's really great. So he also had this to say about Katie. Um, he said she has already lived leadership profoundly in the effort to research, record, and compile a book titled Voices Against Sex Slavery in America. Um, he described this as a deeply moving, powerful work of journalism that will advance the struggle against a scourge of everyday American life. This is what he's talking about, this, this book. Uh, somehow as a college student, Katie managed to publish a book. This is, this is really quite remarkable. I don't know, uh, yeah. I, I can't honestly remember any other undergraduate doing that, and I'm very happy because I just got her to sign my copy. This is very exciting, before she, she departs. So that's really pretty amazing, and uh, I'm sure that pretty amazing is something that we'll be saying uh, over and over and over again about Katie's, uh, move, you know, as she moves on from here, and I'm looking forward to that. So congratulations, good luck, and don't forget us village people when you're out there changing the world. I'm looking forward to it. I have a, a couple of more things to say about Sue Cope and Katzef. We, we try to um, make sure that when our faculty leave us, that we do as much as we can as possible to honor them. Sue has been here for about 20 years, starting as an adjunct teacher. Uh, she started out teaching our radio classes. As you can imagine with that voice, uh, she's really quite amazing on the air. She's never said no to anything we've asked her to do. And a number of years ago, before I got here, we were looking for someone to take over our broadcast, our television. And even though Sue was far more comfortable in radio than television, she jumped in and created a Capital News Service nightly newscast that was really a daunting task. We all appreciate it. We appreciate the way she has served on our committees, whether they're the scholarship committee or um, awards committee or curriculum committee. Uh, she has always been a very valued, hardworking member of the faculty here. And Sue, I'd like to give you a couple of things uh, from our faculty and staff just to say uh, how important we are and to say congratulations and don't you dare disappear. This is kind of a tradition. Uh, we, we have the, the lithograph, those of you, this is what the lithograph looks like inside your envelopes. But we like to write all over these frames and, and say funny and poignant things about our people. So, Sue, I hope this finds a place on your wall. Oh, it will. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Wonderful. need help carrying that out. As we conclude our ceremony, I have a few thoughts to share with our graduates. You are entering journalism at an exciting yet unsettling time. Some of you have already covered the political races and election results for Capital News Service or for places that you interned. You covered stories here ranging from disparities in the plea bargain deals nationwide to the Ellicott City floods. Your work has earned awards nationwide. You witnessed an exceptional political campaign in 2016, followed by two years of incredible conflict and disruption in politics, law, media, and social norms related to race, gender, and equality. All journalists have had to learn hard lessons about balance, fairness, and most importantly, facts. 
Washington Post columnist Margaret Sullivan refers to what we used to call the mainstream media as the reality-based press. You have been taught by the best journalism faculty members in the country to report on reality. You know that your communities, indeed our democracy, needs timely, factual, fair, and insightful coverage of the issues that matter, whether they be a presidential election or a local zoning com controversy, or something that's going on in the school in your neighborhood. You will speak truth to power and shed light on the forgotten. Do not be discouraged by officials who lie, fraudsters who make up stories, social media networks that perpetuate falsehoods, and members of the public who vilify you for your occupation. We are counting on you. We need you. Finally, you have worked very hard to earn your degrees. Thank you and your families for trusting us with your education. You have brought us great joy and you make us proud every single day. Work hard, follow your inner ethical compass, value teamwork, and in the words of one of my favorite country singers, Tim McGraw, be humble and kind. If you do these things, you will do very well. So go out in the world and show everybody what you learned here, that you are Merrill made. Always consider Merrill College to be your University of Maryland home. And make sure you keep us up to date on all the great things that you are doing. Thank you to all the faculty and administration members for participating in today's ceremony, particularly Sarap Rada for managing today's ceremony, Alex Piles for serving as our announcer, and Natalie Cosner for keeping everyone in the Dean Suite organized. Now, please join us in the foyer to offer your congratulations to our graduates and have a wonderful day. Will everyone please rise for the recessional? Please remain standing during the recessional until the faculty, platform party, and students have filed out. Then follow the recession out of the theater. Thank you. Have a good day, and go Terps! Thank you.